What's up everybody? Thanks for checking out the video. I'm Luke. This is a Subaru only channel. In today's video we're talking about kinetic energy, thermal expansion, and how we use one of these tools to set the valves. Let's check it out. Alright, I've got two figures behind me. They're going to walk us through the components of the valve train and what's happening on a conceptual level. After I walk through these figures, I'm going to jump over to my engine and I'm going to show you how you set your valves using a set of these feeler gauges. Okay, in this first figure in the upper left, I'm showing all the components of the valve train. It starts with the rocker arm at the top, and the rocker arm rides on the top of the valve stem. The valve is held up with a retainer and the valve spring, and it goes through the head and enters a combustion chamber where it either lets in that incoming air fuel charge or lets out that exhaust charge. Now, in red right here, I've drawn a little box around where that valve gap is. And that valve gap is where you use one of these feeler gauges to set the thickness to the manufacturer's specs. But this is done when the engine's cold, and that's where this second figure comes in. This second figure illustrates what's happening with that kinetic energy and that thermal expansion and why we need to set the valves when the engine's cold. Let's take a closer look at it. This figure is a graph that has two axes. The bottom one is just your engine temperature and it goes from cold to warm to hot, which is your full operating temperature. The other axis is a vertical axis, which is your metals expansion. That just goes from cold to warm to hot, which is again just full operating temperature. So I've marked three points and I've drawn that same box that I showed up here in that first figure, that valve gap when the engine's cold, warm, and hot. As that kinetic energy transfers into all the metal components, the valve train actually expands. And as that valve train expands, that gap that was cold slowly shrinks to a smaller and smaller and smaller gap as that engine rises to full operating temperature. And that's what I'm showing in this graph. So at the first point, we have that gap when the engine's cold. That's where you set your valves with that feeler gauge. As the engine warms up, that gap gets a little bit smaller, and that's what I'm showing in this second point. And on this third point, the valve gap gets the smallest, which is when the engine's at full operating temperature. And that's where the rocker arm is just barely touching that valve stem top. So that's pretty much what drives the need to set that valve gap when the engine's cold. Because you're anticipating that the engine's going to heat up, and all those components are going to expand, and that valve gap's going to shrink right up. Now the cool thing about this figure is that we've derived the coefficient of thermal expansion. It's pretty simple to understand, just a change in the size of the metal versus the change in the temperature of the metal. And the coefficient of thermal expansion is a really important property of metal that engineers use when they do calculations and they develop specifications for engines like this. So that's basically what's happening on a conceptual level and why you need to set your valves when the engine's cold. Now I'm going to take my feeler gauge, I'm going to jump over to that Forrester engine where I'm doing the head gasket job and I'm going to walk you guys through setting the valves. Alright, this is a set of heads from a 2000 Forester. I'm going to walk you guys through how I set the valve gaps. The first thing you need to do is you need to set the piston at top dead center for the valves you'll be adjusting. On this engine, this is the number one cylinder, so I have the piston at top dead center, which means the valves are fully seated, and if the engine's cold, you're ready to go ahead and set your valves. The second thing you need to know is what the manufacturer's specs are for those valves, and they're going to be different for the intake valve versus the exhaust valve, because the exhaust valve is going to have more kinetic energy and more heat transmitted into the, into the valve assembly, so it's going to expand more, which means it needs a bigger gap to start with. For this engine, the manufacturer's specs are 0.2 millimeters for the intake and 0.25 millimeters for the exhaust. So I go ahead and take my feeler gauge, I select a 0.2 millimeter thickness, and I attempt to slide it in between this rocker arm tip and the valve stem top. If you can't slide it in there, that means the valve gap is too small and you need to adjust it so that that feeler gauge can just barely slide through. To adjust it, you take your 10 millimeter box end wrench and a flat blade screwdriver. You put the box end wrench over the rocker arm, lightly loosen it, and then once you've loosened the nut, you can use your screwdriver to back out that adjustment screw. Once you've backed out that adjustment screw far enough, you'll be able to slide that feeler gauge through and then slowly tighten down that adjustment screw just so that it's snug enough to lightly drag on that feeler gauge. Here's a close-up of exactly where that feeler gauge goes in between the rocker arm adjustment screw and the top of that valve stem. Once you have the right gap, you go ahead and put your box end wrench over, you put your screwdriver in the adjustment screw, you hold the adjustment screw in place with the screwdriver and then you tighten down with the box end wrench. Then take your feeler gauge and check one more time. You should have a nice snug fit, feel a little bit of drag from that adjustment screw, and then you know that valve gap is set perfect.
Okay, I put the three basic steps for setting your valve gap on the whiteboard here. The first step is understanding what your firing order is. For this 2000 Subaru Forester engine that's a 2.5 liter, the firing order is 1, 3, 2, 4. The second step is setting the pistons to top dead center when you're going to go ahead and set those valve gaps. And the third step is knowing exactly what the valve gaps need to be set to per the manufacturer's specs. And the reason there's a difference between the intake valve gap and the exhaust valve gap is because on the exhaust side, there's more kinetic energy and more heat transmitted to those valve components, so they expand a little bit more than the intake components, and they require a bigger valve gap initially when it's cold to accommodate for that larger expansion that's going to take place. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there for today, guys. Thank you so much for checking out the video. I hope you learned something about valve gaps, kinetic energy, thermal expansion, and I hope you found value in this video. If you did find value, please go ahead and subscribe, like the video, comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much. I'm Luke. This is a Subaru-only channel. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I'll see you guys next time. Later.